In this tutorial, I will show you how to add collision tags to a URDF. This is going to be super useful for stacks like Move It, for example, or for any robot that you will want to use in Gazebo, you will need the collision tags. And I'm going to start from a URDF file that I already have here. It's called myrobot.urdf. So I'm going to start it with Visual Studio Code here. You can download this file if you want. So I've put a link in the description below to download this exact file. Or you can just see what I'm doing here and do the same for your own URDF. And so what do we have in this uh, file for now? So this is a basic URDF file. I have a few materials here for the, for the, just for the colors and then some links. Okay. You can see here I use basic shapes. Okay. Use some a box here. So that's a mobile robot with a base link. That's going to be a box. And then a cylinder here, another cylinder, and I have a sphere. Okay. So in your own URDF, maybe you have those shapes. Maybe you also have some custom shape with STL files or Colada files. Okay. So basically you have some links and then we have some joints. Okay. So for the joints, we don't really care about this right now because the collision is going to be inside the links. And as you can see now, I have zero collision. So before we write the collision, let's actually see how we will be able to check that the collision is working. Let's go back to the terminal and I'm going to start the URDF in Arvis. So I'm just going to visualize it in Arvis. How to do that very simply? Well, you can use the URDF tutorial package. If you don't have it, so the apt install ros dash distribution. So humble for me, but can be different for you. And then URDF tutorial. Like this. So you install this package, then you make sure that you source the global ROS2 installation like this. So again, replace with your own distribution. And then you can do ROS2 launch URDF tutorial. So here it's an underscore display that launch.py with model. So an argument name model. And you're going to provide the path. So the absolute path to the URDF file. So here slash home slash add, that's my user and then slash my robot URDF. Make sure you use the auto completion. Okay. So that you don't make any mistake. Okay. So I am on RVs here and what I want to show you is, so with URDF tutorial, it's nice. You already have this view. I'm going to go to robot model here and you can see I have visual enabled and collision enabled. So with visual, you can see I enable disable and I can see the, the visual part and I can enable the collision. But as you can see, when I enable the collision, I have nothing here. Why is that? Because well, simply we don't have any collision. So we're going to write the collision tags and then we're going to come back to this and we're going to be able to see the collision um, here in the screen. So let's go back here. Let's kill that. And let's start to write a collision tag. So where do we add the collisions? As I told you, we're going to add them in the links. So in the link, you have visual tag and simply after the visual tag. So here for the, we're going to start with the base link because we have a, we have like a kind of a virtual link here. So virtual link, we don't have any visual. We're not going to add any collision. Okay. So here with this link, we have a visual. I'm going to add a collision. So simply after visual, you put collision like that. And then it's very easy because the collision is actually be. So what's the shape of the collision you want? It's actually going to be very similar to the shape of the visual. OK, and you will go even further. Actually, you will try to simplify as much as possible the shape of the visual. So I'm going to come back to this in a second. But for now, you can see for the base link, we have a box. So the box is the most simple shape you can have. OK, so what I will do in the collision is I will just take the geometry tag and I will take the origin tag as well. I don't take the material. OK, we're not going to take the material for the collision. So geometry tag and the origin tag and I will put it there. So now in my link, I have a visual tag with geometry, origin, material and I have a collision tag with geometry and origin. Let's save. And we're just going to test this. So I'm going to run again this uh, command and let's go back here. Let's go to robot model. Let's disable the visual and let's enable the collision. And you can see 
we have the collision. So it's green because we still have the material from the, the visual. So on Arvis, that's what you're going to see. But now you see that, well, we have a collision for the base link. So what does it mean? Here you can see it's exactly the, the same shape. What does it mean? It means that for stacks like Movit or for Gazebo, it's going to use actually not the visual. The visual is not going to be used. The collision is going to be used to determine, well, what's going to be the collision with the floor and with other objects and with other robots. So it's going to compute the collisions using this shape here, that one, not the visual. And so one thing you can guess now is, well, the more complex the shape, the more complicated it's going to be to compute the collisions. So for a shape like this, which is a box, it's super easy. And for actually any shape that we have here, it's also super easy. But if you have a complex STL or Colada file, actually, if you have Colada files for the visual, here, if you use real meshes, it's probably better that you simplify the shape for the collision, which means that for the visual in the geometry, you would have a mesh with, for example, a very complex Colada file. And for the geometry, you would create a simplified STL file with much less details. Okay, the goal here is to have an approximation that's gonna be good enough, but so you can save a lot of computation power for the collision. And well, right here I'm using basic shapes, so of course here for a box you can't really save anything, so that's gonna be the, the same as a box. But I'm gonna show you another example here with the LiDAR here. So the LiDAR is this part here on top. The visual that I have for now is a cylinder. But what I could say is for the collision, we're going to use a box instead, okay? because collisions for a box is going to be easier to compute than for a cylinder. So what I will do here in the LiDAR, so now you start to know after visual, we do collision like that. And what do we do? We just take the geometry and the origin. All right, but then instead of a cylinder, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a box. Okay, and I will need to put size and put the dimensions for the box. So what would be the dimensions here? Well, you can see the radius is 0 0.1, which means the diameter here is going to be 0 0.2. Okay, so 0 0.2 on X and 0 0.2 on Y. So I'm going to put 0 0.2 here, 0 0.2. And then the Z is going to be the length. Okay, so the length here on Z. Is going to be 0 0.05 okay so let's actually test with it maybe it's wrong and maybe we can just fix it after we visualize it okay so let's make sure you save the file and then let's run again so this is the visual but if i do the collision you can see now the collision so it's on top this is what's going to be used to compute the collision for this element here Okay, so this is the visual, but this is going to be what's going to be used for the collision. So less computation power. And here you can see it's not the exact shape, but that's going to be good enough. Okay, if you compute a collision with this box or this cylinder, it's going to be the same. Okay, it's not going to be any problem. So here's how you can simplify the shapes Okay, for the collision. So as you can see here for the geometry of the visual, we have something different than for the geometry of the collision. Then let's continue and let's go with the left wheel and the right wheel. And here actually, well, I'm going to keep for the wheels, I'm going to keep a cylinder. Why? Because this wheel here, and so for those wheels and also for the caster wheel here, those wheels are going to touch the ground. Okay, so if you touch the ground, you want to have a collision that's also going to be uh, correct. Okay, if you have a collision that's a box here, well, that's not going to work correctly in Gazebo. Because imagine you have a car and the wheels are not uh, circular, but the wheels are in a square like this. Well, your car is going to behave in a very weird way. Well, it's going to be the same if you use this for the wheels in Gazebo. So for the LiDAR, no problem here to use a box because it's, it doesn't really touch the floor. But for the wheels, we're going to keep a cylinder. So let's go ahead and do that. So the left wheel, I'm going to do collision, collision here. And then I just take the same shape. So geometry and origin. 
And what I can do is I can just take this and put it after the visual in the right wheel because that's going to be the same. Okay, so you can see now it goes uh, quite quickly. And then we have the caster wheel, which is this thing here. So that's a sphere that if we wanted, we could also use a box, but same thing, it touches the ground. So we want to have just one point of contact here, not, not like a box, okay? So I will also add here a collision and collision here. That's gonna be the geometry and the origin. Okay, I save and then let's go back. So you can see after you know how to do it once, it's very easy. And what do we have? Now I can go here. Let's disable the visual. Let's enable the collision. And you can see now we have a collision element for each part, so for each link of the robot. And once again, if you use some uh, meshes here, some custom meshes like Colada files or STL files for the visual, you can simplify them a lot. So either by simplifying the meshes and create a very simplified STL, or if sometimes, if you can just use the shapes like the, the box, the cylinder or the sphere, so the basic shapes of the URDF. All right, and that's the end of this tutorial. And if you want to go further with TF, URDF, Zacro, launch files with the Robot State Publisher, etc. If you want to know how to actually simulate this robot in Gazebo, well, I have a complete course just for you, which contains more than nine hours of video content. So you can check out the course by clicking in the link in the description. All right, thank you for watching and see you in the next one.